Hi, this is the Social Jello with Angelo show. My name's Angelo. I'm a social scientist, surfer, martial artist, and a whole lot of other things. Coming to you live from Kasai City, Japan, the Social Jello with Angelo show. One. What's up? And welcome to Social Jello with Angelo podcast. I'm here with. S- oh my gosh. You, you, okay. I'm going to say the name that I see in front of me. Anthony Sonny Ramos. Did I say that right? Yes, sir. All right, cool. My dad, everybody, everybody calls me Sonny. Sonny works. All right, cool. Cool. I'm here with Sonny yeah. Ramos. Um, Sonny's coming out of Train for Life MMA gym in the, the Bay Area, right? Yep. Northern California. Okay. Northern California. He is also a brown belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and a black belt in Kaja Kambo. Um, if you don't know, I'm Angelo Ferrer. This is your first podcast. Welcome to the show. Today, we are covering karate versus Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Why are karate guys learning Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu? Why? I thought this was buried already. Honestly, I thought this was done. Like, I thought we figured this out in 1991, 92 in UFC 1. Um you know, why are people still talking about this is really the question that comes to my mind. And I know it sounds like, well, maybe some of you have been doing martial arts for a while. say, like, ah, this has been settled. But I keep seeing it come up. I keep seeing it come up in discussions. I saw a discussion the other day. Some guy jumps in on some line saying that Brazilian jiu-jitsu is dead. It's dead. You can tell in the UFC, no one is using Brazilian jiu-jitsu anymore. Everyone is using more stand up and kickboxing and styles and going back to traditional karate as a way to defend themselves. There's a lot of things that can be said about that. Ramsey Dewey did a great video on it about how everyone's skill sets are negating each other now because everybody's becoming truly mixed martial artists. But I'm not going to answer my own question here. I am going to start this off with my first story of grappling. So I'm a Kaji Kimbo black belt, but the first time I ever grappled, I was told that if someone grabbed me with two hands, I am to drop down into a horse stance, put my hands in block like this. It would instantly break both of their arms, and then I'll be able to throw them onto the ground and do whatever I want. They'd be my bitch. So I tried it. We were sitting there doing no gi for the first time. I'm like, I'm going to try it out. This is full contact. We could do whatever we want. The guy grabbed, put both his hands on me right here. It was no gi, kind of slippery. And I brought up my arms. And I was kind of surprised that his arms didn't snap. And then I ended up in a being flipped around and tumbling around. He got me in an arm bar. And it lasted a total of like five or six seconds. And I realized real quick that dropping into a horse stance wasn't very and a very effective way to stop a single leg takedown. Now, that's my story about gravity. I'm just going to grab that story and all this information, just throw it off to Sonny and have him share what he thinks about all this. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Now, uh, okay, well, you shared your first experience. My first experience, um, I completely had zero ground game outside of Kajikembo, and uh, we ended up just doing, just jumped in and started rolling. And uh, there was probably about, I don't know, maybe eight guys on the mat, including myself. And we were running, it was like, I don't know, four or five minute rounds. And then we're just, you know, bell rings, you go to the next guy. And I would say in a 30 minute session, each person probably taught me out like 20 to 30 times. And uh, I, I mean, obviously, in that moment, I was like, holy crap, Uh, this is completely unknown to me, and I am utterly useless in a self-defense, in a self-defense scenario where I am going against somebody that knows what they're doing in a grappling Um, Yeah, and and that was really, really enlightening. Um, I wouldn't say it was disheartening, it was motivating, you know, and uh, that was kind of what sparked my whole uh, Brazilian uh, jiu-jitsu journey. And then how coming from, like I said, it wasn't disheartening, right? Some people would find it disheartening. (laughs) Some people would find it mind-boggling that you you spent your whole life practicing this martial art that's supposed to prepare you for to defend yourself. 
and then you find yourself in a position where once you negate some rules, some rule, we start negating some rules. I was rules just here, gonna right? say, you yeah. know, like, <laughs> uh, you know, according to the rules, I, I mean, when we start, you know, we're already gonna start on our knees, right? And it's like, well, and then I can't hit you, so you know, rule sets play uh, are everything. You know, like where I'm at in my martial arts journey, like styles and all these things. Um, you know, they, they're more of like a traditional thing coming from me. Um, for me, it's like, what, what are the rules? Yeah. So, you know, as far as like styles and whatnot go, they are, they're more like a traditional thing for me, as far as like, Oh, you do this style, I'll do that style. But you know, when it comes to defending myself or competing, it's just, I, I feel pretty competent if I know what the rules are you know, then I know that I can at least at a bare minimum defend myself and not die, you know, at least at, at this point. Back then, shit, you know, I obviously got broken and died like 30 times in five minutes, you know. And I think that's really like a, and I, for those people that don't know what Kaja Kimbo is, I always say I encourage you to check out the What is Kaja Kimbo podcast. There's a link somewhere there. At the end of the video, it has it too, so you can kind of be up to speed about what we're talking about. And I think it's the do or die attitude that we have in Kaja Kembo. Like, like, like you just said, I died six or seven times. Like the average person going into a jiu-jitsu class wouldn't even process death. They'd just be like, hey, whatever. Like, you know, I lost at this Brazilian jiu-jitsu sport thing. Like the guy had me in some weird thing and he, he wrapped whatever, the pajamas. They don't even know what they call gi, right? He wrapped his pajamas around my neck and, and I had to tap because I felt like I was joking. But they don't process it as a death. But for a a karate guy, because we're kind of, I mean, Kaju Kembo is a mixed martial art, but a lot of it does come from a sport karate background, a lot of stand up. And we're in our philosophy. I, I can't speak for karate guys, but I can speak for Kaju Kembo guys on this one. <laughs> we're really taught this mentality of fighting to the death, fighting for our survival. So, being, I don't know, how, you could maybe clarify this better than I can, but I know for me as a Kaju Kembo guy, yeah, being tapped very much feels like death <laughs> like, even though it's just an r bar or just a triangle it's like i died like i wouldn't survive and, and that that's like really uncomfortable and tough to digest <laughs> go ahead sonny what do you think on that yeah you know you, you you get locked up in a submission and you know depending on the submission you know for for me personally it'd be like okay if he broke my arm, you know, how would I really respond to this? Would I be, would I still be able to defend myself? I don't know, you know? Um, but yeah, equating it to, to, to death, you know, um, it, it makes you really, you know, reevaluate um, your knowledge. Um, and then, you know, for me, it was, you know, we were talking about, you know, it wasn't disheartening. It was more of like, yo, like, this is, it was more of a, like a wake up call, you know, and I need to be able to expand my game. If I'm going to call myself, you know, a Kaji Kembo black belt and, you know, part of Kaji Kembo is judo jujitsu, um, you know, it, it, I, I just felt like I was lying to myself, you know, and then it, it pushed me to just really dive in and, and do it because, you know, I, I used to think, I used to think, you know, uh, back in the day, you know, watching UFC and and all that, I, I used to think I was like, man, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu was whack. It was, you know, like, dude, I, they're on the ground hugging, and, and you're taught in college, right? Like, the in the traditional sense of like, don't go to the ground. You don't want to be on the ground. So, you know, we never really learned anything about being on the ground, but we were also never tested, you know, being on the ground in that sense from. You know, obviously somebody that knew what the really what the ground game was. So, you know, I used to think it was whack. I was like, this is boring. This is stupid. He's not even hitting him. It's, you know, um, until I got I got just folded up in every which way. And like I said, you know, it was, when it came to like, oh, shit, you know, he it, if I didn't tap him, you know, he's got it. <laughs> I, 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 he could have just continued to strangle me until I was no longer breathing. So. <laughs> yeah I, mean, I used to think the same thing my dad would watch mma and 
um, I'd be on my way to a Kaja Kimbo class. And he, in Spanish, he was more of a, he was a big boxing fan. So he, he would be, and he wasn't a martial artist, just a, you know, casual fan. So he's watching MMA and he'd be like, Porque se están abrazando? Why are they hugging so much? <laughs> that was, that was his, his common number of Jiu Jitsu. Man, did he come out of there with a bunch of kids? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why they, oh, God. Yeah, he'd complain. Oh, they're hugging again. I got to watch them hugging for three minutes. And he'd be so upset about it back in the 90s. Um, so like, yeah, that, that's a, kind of like the evolution of the sport. Um, a lot of people back then didn't know what they were seeing. Um, now in 2024, a lot of you are probably laughing because you already know Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is a common sport now. When I start saying things like arm bar, a triangle choke, you know what I'm talking about. Well, back then, all they saw was some guy wrapping his legs around another guy's head. And that, <laughs> for some people, was didn't exactly create a very combat sport response out of them. <laughs> so I guess it's, it was a really different. Uh, it was a really different sociological perspective. And I talk about that in my show that I'm always looking at things from social psychology. Social jello does not mean socialist. I don't know who said that. Someone <laughs> said that to me once. <laughs> it, means, it means like sociology, like looking at things from a social perspective. And we were pretty much in a different time zone. Like back then, it was just unheard of, unseen. And if you look at Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and you don't know what you're looking at, it doesn't exactly, fighting doesn't come to mind for a lot of people. The average person. See there, you, you want another <laughs> controversial topic, right? <laughs> is jujitsu fighting? If you can't get punched in the face, are we really fighting? There you yeah. go. There, there, there's the next podcast. <laughs> yeah, there it is right there. Yeah, is it really fighting? And I think that's what a lot of people have been saying, using the word jujitsu player rather than jujitsu fighter. And then, uh, and then I'll, I'll, I'll take it up a notch and say, if I see a Brazilian jujitsu guy, fighting an MMA, then I'll start saying, oh, they're an MMA fighter. And they'd have a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. They're a Jiu-Jitsu fighter. When I see two people doing Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, just Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, I call it a Jiu-Jitsu player, a Jiu-Jitsu match. I, 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 that's just me. And I know some people get upset. Like, I, I agree, <laughs> but I have, I, I have, this is a common uh, 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 debate amongst me and uh, my buddies. And some guys are like hardcore, like, you're tripping. <laughs> jiu-jitsu is fighting and i'm like i don't know if i can't punch you in your face i don't know if we're fighting or not <laughs> and but then this then again oh, that same person can turn around and strangle the shit out of me and i'm like i'm fighting for my life so i guess <laughs> i guess i'm fighting <laughs> it, it definitely feels like i'm fighting <laughs> <laughs> absolutely I, I like that i saw a meme of uh it wasn't a meme it was a video and it said how Brazilian jiu-jitsu feels and it had a it had a and, and big uh, props out there and rest in, in paradise uh, Akira Tokuyama I think his name is if I said that right let me make sure let me make sure let me make sure let me make sure because like, if I messed that up that's gonna be a thing I'll have a bunch of I don't want to yeah Akira Toriyama Akira Toriyama rest in peace brother um the creator of Dragon Ball Z so they had these two guys fighting and it shows it shows uh two characters one guy named goku and Vegeta, and they're fighting they're striking and punching and kicking each other at like a hundred million miles an hour because they're like saying gods and then it shows this is what brazilian jiu-jitsu feels like and then this is what brazilian jiu-jitsu looks like and it shows two guys just stuck in the grip <laughs> battle and not doing anything they're just for like two minutes not moving <laughs> but it feels like a hundred miles an hour but what it looks like is very different <laughs> oh absolutely absolutely it's very different when when you're on the receiving end <laughs> and then you know that then it's also like gi versus no gi right the it, it, i didn't you know really see the difference until i started you know really diving into the gi aspect and then you realize like how weak your fingers are <laughs> yeah yeah how weak your finger oh my gosh brazilian jiu-jitsu <laughs> fingers are a thing and then the older you get, like, at first you're like, oh, I feel so strong. And then, but then the older you get, you're like, you know, that strength is starting to feel a little more like arthritis. Right. <laughs> yeah, his fingers are all mangled. Like, what the hell? Uh, well, we want to introduce your Claude in the middle of the podcast. Hi, Claude. Can you hear us? Are we summoning? We're summoning Claude. We're conjuring Claude. Claude needs to piss his sound again one more time. So, while Claude is figuring out his sound issues, which I think he still has in his ear. Yeah, he still has his sound. You got to push the, push the button again, buddy. So, um, yeah. So, again, like, there's this, there's this thing that happens where it's 
feels really intense, but what actually looks what actually looks like is a little bit different. One. So yeah, it can seem very intense. But for some of you wondering, like I don't know where someone magically appeared. <laughs> so this is Claude Lawson. He's got a black belt Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and he's also a Kaja Kimbo guy. Um, not to reverse our topic or what we were talking about too much, but Claude, what was your first experience coming into Brazilian Jiu Jitsu? How how things work out for you? Uh, actually, um, I was kickboxing at the time at uh, in Abilene, Texas. I was stationed there, and uh, a guy that uh, um, I knew, we trained a few times, sparred on base a few times, you know, the old point sparring and all that good stuff. I uh, had gone to college, come back home, and he was doing Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu at the time. Um, and we were on, it was like 1994, 1995. And uh, we were on like a uh, carpet covered um, uh, concrete <laughs> floors uh, grappling. And uh, that was my first introduction to it. His name is um, Jimmy Chaikon. Um, I think he's a third degree or fourth degree in, in jiu-jitsu, but uh, he um, he, uh, he has since uh, retired, moved on to some other things, but um, he says he'll get back into it in the future. But uh, that was my first exposure, especially during that time frame. I, I, I'm not sure what year the UFC started. I can't remember. but 1991, UFC won. 94. 90... 1993. November 12th, 1990. 1990? 1993. 93. Yeah. So I remember watching the first couple, you know, but watching the first one, we were all like, yeah, some groundwork needs to be added to what we're doing. Um, Because we were heavy in the the kickboxing at the time, competing and all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, it was uh, was a wake-up call that someone could take me down and I I, I couldn't, my punches won't won't work. (laughs) I have to learn positions to be able to strike. Um, but that was my first introduction to it was with, was with him. And he was, at the time, he was a white belt. And so you just mentioned a good point because me and Cindy were just talking about a jiu-jitsu player versus a jiu-jitsu fighter. And then this is going to bring us to modern jiu-jitsu because <laughs> modern jiu-jitsu now isn't what jiu-jitsu was going on back then. Since everybody was watching UFC 1, your introduction to Brazilian jiu-jitsu had striking. You were striking. <laughs> <laughs> by the way like if you go to a brazilian jiu-jitsu class now you're not going to be introduced to brazilian jiu-jitsu with striking um no, no. that'll be that'll come much much later oh some schools that's an option and yeah. that that comes to another argument that some of the old school jiu-jitsu guys have been complaining about modern school jiu-jitsu Ooh, i'm gonna kind of Stay away from that heavy button at the time because I want to go. I want to try to stay centralized on our main topic of karate and jiu-jitsu. But um, but yeah, we were talking about the difference between striking and not striking. And I, my my story was only Brazilian jiu-jitsu based. There was no striking involved. Um, and then, but it was because I was doing MMA, so there was striking involved in another combat sport arena that I was dealing with. Um. The question I'm going to throw out to both of you then is why do you think karate guys, specifically because it's karate versus Brazilian jiu-jitsu, why do you think so many karate guys started doing Brazilian jiu-jitsu after UFC won? You've you seen who won. <laughs> <laughs> You watched every every art fall when it came to 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 jujitsu when it came to being taken down. Honestly, up until a certain point, most karate guys, traditional or, or modern or 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 a hybrid or whatever, held their striking at such a high. And not that everything starts standing up. Of course, you land a good punch, the fight's over. That's with anybody. But they had this 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 idea that. Um, no one's ever going to take me down. It's never going to get to that point. Not realizing how easy it is to actually take someone down. You know, we're not we're not all talking about the trained wrestler or the trained MMA fighter out there, but how easy it is to take the the, the average guy who wants to start up. How easy it is to actually engage and take them down to the ground. You know, one strike will. Um, even uh, one of my uh, boxing coaches would say, "I'll I'll I'll throw I I throw two hooks and and, and catch you." And I'm like, 
No, no, you won't. <laughs> we all seen what Randy Couture did to James yeah. Tony. <laughs> exactly. And that's a professional fighter. And it took how, how long did it take? It was an ankle pick, right? It was an ankle pick. Uh, ankle yeah. pick, and it was pretty much over from the time he hit the ground. Yeah, like ankle pick, like a like a uh, like a, uh, a low single. Yeah, he put his shoulder into it. Ankle pick and mm -hmm. put his shoulder into it, like right above, right in the middle of the shin, I think it was. Mm -hmm. And quick, easy takedown. And and if you don't know how to strike on the ground, you, you really got you have nothing. So that's. That's what a lot of them, I think, saw is is after a while, because um, believe me, that 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 idea of that or that persona of invincibility when it comes to my my karate style, it was heavy <laughs> for a very very long time, and it's it's really hard. Some people had to go and and some people got humbled going into jujitsu schools to try certain things out over time, and that's just how it went. They just got the idea that okay, maybe I need to learn some ground techniques to go along with it, and then. They only wanted to learn a few things, thinking that that was going to cover the wide array of jujitsu techniques that exist out there. I, there's a counter for every counter, and there's a counter for that counter, and so on and so forth. And they didn't realize that either. Sonny, what do you do? You have anything else? I mean, yeah, I, I agree a hundred percent. You know, um, from from you know, I I can only speak as you know from a Koch Kemble background, right? Um, you know, we're told not to go to the ground, you know, I mean, obviously, when it comes to street fighting, you don't want to be on the ground, you know, you don't know what's going to be down there, you don't want, you know, so everything was like, you know, we strike, and then we take the other person down, however we do it. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, when, when you have that experience of, you know, actually being the guy that's on the ground, you know, or, or not even if you don't have had that experience, just watching it, and if you're, you know, open-minded enough to be like, yo, these guys are like professional athletes and, um, you know, he can't stop that takedown. And, you know, I haven't trained any type of jujitsu in my life, you know, uh, you know, during that time or, or whatever, you know, it's like, you got to be honest with yourself and you got to be like, okay, if, if, if I'm really, you know, uh, um, if, if I'm really Kaj Kembo, you know, claiming to be, Right, I'm I'm gonna have to be able to fill all these gaps of having a karate base, having a judo jujitsu base, you know, understanding kenpo, boxing, kickboxing, and kung fu, you know, and um, I mean, even to this day, a lot of it is is really lacking, and that's kind of why I really dove in because I was like, man, I, I I'd like to be a part of helping fill that void for kaji kenpo, at least modern jujitsu, right? I mean, yeah. <clears throat> So this comes to another thing that comes up, and I got in trouble. Um, <laughs> I'll just yeah, I'm just gonna you get in trouble for it. I, I, didn't, I didn't get in trouble. People are still arguing. I don't know if I ever get really get in trouble as much as I just stir the pot, but <laughs> but the the last pot stir that I um that I posted was um. So here's the thing, <laughs> like <laughs> so, and th this came up because I saw some Krav Maga guys. And don't even get me started with Krav Maga, but well, I saw some Krav Maga guys doing some Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. They were doing grappling. They didn't call it Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. They said, hey, our school's expanding and trying to do, trying to include more combat. And I pretty much saw two guys in street clothes doing, you know, not bad. Their, their grappling wasn't bad. It wasn't that bad. They were, they were passing guard and stuff. But that's not the point of the, the story. The point of the story is some guy jumped in the comments and started saying, he said that, um, well, this is nice and all, but unless you address the fact of biting, gouging, eye gouging, ear pooling, thump, uh, growing, stomping, throat pooling, jugular squeezing, then you're not addressing real combat. And um, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't help but say something, but it, it led to the comment that I posted on my page saying, using the argument that combat sports doesn't equal real fighting is like saying Michael Phelps would drown if he went for a swim at the ocean. Like, <laughs> that's, that's, that's so, cool, I'll, I'll give you that. Absolutely. <laughs> so, but more or less without being so aggressive on this co combat sports, there's this idea that combat sports is no good in a real fight. What do you guys think about this? Oh boy. Okay. I'll go for unless you want to go first, man. <laughs> it's all okay. yours, brother. So I, I've heard 
I've heard that so many times about the biting, the gouging, and, and the throat. Here's here's the here's the bottom line. I won't even go through all the rest. Here's the bottom line. You still have to know something about jujitsu in order to stop me from grinding you into the ground and you trying to breathe while while I'm trying to get to whatever choke or or or, or leg lock or Achilles, whatever I'm trying, whatever, whatever I'm trying to get to, because people see jujitsu as just submissions. Most of those locks are breaks. This is not a submission. The submission is the nice part of jujitsu. All of those, I get, I can break your ankle. I can, I, you know, I can pop your knee out, you know, hyperextend your leg, you know, pop your, the, the capsule in, in your elbow. Those are all meant to end that joint that I'm applying pressure to. But while I'm getting to that, I'm applying immense pressure to put you in a position where you can't counter. And if you do try to gab an ear or something like that, I'm the, I would be the dumbest person in the world to put my ear right beside your mouth in a street fight and think you might not bite me or whatever. The jujitsu player is thinking about that also. I will, they just might get me in trouble. I will caveat <laughs> this with, with the um, tournament because I do think, I do, and, and I've, I've had this conversation before, I do have a, see a distinct difference between tournament jujitsu for, for medals and things like that and training specifically to fight, specifically. Um, because your mindset is different, not the techniques are so much different. The mindset of it is different. You're playing a game in one and one you're acting. I mean, when it turns serious, it turns serious, but there's just movements that I would never use in a street or in, on a basketball court, in a gym, wherever we are, I would never use certain techniques, you know? There would be no barambola. There would be no me uh, uh, going upside down or anything like that in a real fight. I'm just trying to go to whatever joint I'm trying to get to and break it and be done. Um, but yeah, I've heard I've heard that that conversation forever. Being able to maintain your poise that long in a real fight when there's an adrenaline dump and both of you are going for what you know and you're on your back and you don't know it, which one of us is more comfortable? Okay. That's the whole thing when it comes to I uh, gouge his eyes out or I'll, I'll, I'll poke him, you know, in the groin or, or do whatever. How poised are you on the ground and have you battle test that? You know, Kyle Kimball's taught you hit the ground, but you do whatever you can to get back up. But when you have an anaconda around you that is trained to drag you back down, you have to know how to recover. It's not just going to happen if you never trained it. That's my two cents on that. All right, Sonny. So, you know, a guy that I used to really train with and uh, kind of got me, um, you know, thinking about the next level, he would always talk about like, you know, people saying that same thing. And uh, his response was always like, okay. And I, th I think Claude, you touched on it was like the position, right? If I'm going to put you in a position to where you can eye gouge me, uh, you can bite me, you can hit me in the crotch. Like I'm literally going to be in a superior position to do the same exact thing to you. And I'm, I'm going to be in a more dominant place to be able to do that from. Right. Um, so, you know, it, it, it's like, I think they forget like, like, yeah, you can do that. Sure. You can. And, and but like, I can too in that scenario. And I tell you what, if you fucking bite me, I am going to bite the shit out of you. <laughs> I have a college black belt. I'm going to kick you in the nuts right out the gate. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> uh, so, you know, in, in that sense, it's just like, uh, it, it's, it's still an un. If you think that biting, eye gouging, and, you know, striking in the groin uh, in a grappling sense is going to even this playing field somehow when you have no grappling experience, it's not like, it, it, if anything, it makes it worse for you. Because, and, and then the other thing is like, okay, so, I mean, if, if I do take you down, are you really going to like, is the mindset like, oh, I'm going to gouge this guy's eye, right? Like, are you really going to go to that? Is that going to be your first instinct? Or is it going to be, oh my God, I need to get up. And as soon as you get up, you're going to get strangled because you're giving up your neck. Right. Yep. So, I mean, you know, it, it's, it's, uh, 
it's it's a very uh it's it's a funny argument it doesn't make it doesn't make any sense and for, yeah. coming from you know my perspective but you know i i can see what they're saying but it, it still doesn't make sense if you look at the reality of it yeah and then and then someone someone commented i think it was uh well, you know, if Michael Phelps was in the ocean, he has to deal with the currents and and the waves, and and he would be. But I, I said, well, but still, Michael Phelps would be way more prepared to swim in the ocean than someone just talking about swimming on the internet. Like it's it's it's, it's that simple. Like he, he swims every day in a pool. He's and we're just talking about swimming here. But if you have a guy who's practicing, who's actually fighting full contact, and then. Okay, we can have the gray argument that we like said earlier, jujitsu, sport jujitsu isn't is it fighting if we're not punching in the face, right? Is it fighting if we're not punching in the face? But there is this one thing that happens in jujitsu that I think is kind of interesting that more difficult to do with striking sports. I can go full force in Brazilian jiu-jitsu, full force, and we can set a set of parameters. For example, I can set a set of parameters saying, okay, I'm not going to crank my submissions. I'm going to go IBJJF rules. And for those of you who don't know IBJJF rules, meaning, you know, I'm going to take out the neck cranks and um, I'm going to take out the leg locks even. Let's take out the leg locks just to make things safer for everyone because we might have a beginner. And for those of you that don't know Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, the problem with leg locks isn't so much that they're not effective is that they're so effective that when a person gets caught in a leg lock they tend to move in a place that gets them injured that's just what happens it, 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 that's just what happens it's not and i was just doing this with my cousin who's never done brazilian jiu-jitsu went to visit california he got caught in a leg lock and everyone was like how can we let that go i'm like because he was about to just pop his knee right out of place. break his own leg yep he started he started yanking his leg in a weird position i was like oh shit like i'm not i don't want to i don't want to break my cousin's leg just to right. show them how good jujitsu, ah, jujitsu works really well. <laughs> now you can't walk for two years. So, like, <laughs> so, like, so, so let's say we get rid of all the dangerous stuff, and then people are online immediately. Oh, well, it's not real. You took it out and you made it less. But here's the whole deal. Let's let's make it safe. Let's make it safe, and I can go at a hundred percent. I can, and we can. Okay, no slams. Even. Okay, we'll, we'll we'll make it even more gentle. I we'll start like what Sunny said. We'll start on our knees. So I don't have to worry about the energy it takes to slam you onto the ground. But once I've taken all that out, when I start grabbing, when we start grabbing each other, I can literally squeeze you and grab you and hold onto your arm at 100% my strength. Yeah. And then you have to work with other aspects that jujitsu sometimes touches, sometimes doesn't. Like I weight lift. I'm sure you guys weight lift too. We don't just sit around. We don't just. Uh, I'm assuming. I'm making an assumption here because Sunny looks kind of yoked. Um, <laughs> but, but you know, we go to the gym. We train. We lift weights. We get stronger. So now, whatever my maxes are, start coming out right away. So I can literally hold you as hard as I can. You got to pull out. You got to try to pull out your arm or try to get away from this as best as you can, as hard as you can. I can't do that as much in striking. I love striking. We can. We won't be able to do that every week. No. We won't be able to do that. I'm 42. I don't even want to do that once a year. Like, <laughs> towards the end of my career, at 39, I was like, I'll take on two or three MMA fights a year. I, and I, it's not because I was a UFC fighter. I was fighting smokers, but I was just like, my body, I know 40 is coming, and I don't want to – I don't want to – and I still ended my fucking career with an injury, which I was trying to avoid. Um I didn't even want to do it towards the end of it. I didn't want to do it two or three times a year. So, right. like, you can't do that even – as a young guy, maybe you could do it three or four times a year, but you're really risking it. But in, yeah. in jiu-jitsu, you can. You can. You can essentially make a safe parameter where you can go 100% strength to battle test it. What do you guys think about it? It's, it's true. The, 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 the leverage or the, or the leeway you have – training jiu-jitsu at 100 miles an hour. Like you said, putting all those other caveats in place, you can still go 100 miles an hour. And with relative uh, assurity, no one's going to get hurt, you know, for the most part. Because you can get all the way to getting to to an Americano or whatever, to whatever joint lock you want to get to, and you still have to apply pressure. If you got the position, the other person knows it, and you can press on and go on, and you're going 100 miles an hour again. When it comes to striking, 
the moment you land a, a, a punch, a hard one or something solid, the other person's hurt. Okay, anything that comes after that third, fourth, fifth hook, whatever that you want to throw, it's just adding more damage. So you can't train that way all the time. You, you just you just cannot. Um, I hear that. Well, we've been we were doing this for years, but I hear now that they're looking at training striking differently, where they're only sparring at like 20, 30, 40 percent, which is which will help a lot with a lot of these fighters training. But it still doesn't give you the same sensitivity as what would Hicks on say the the sensibility, the sensitivity that jujitsu gives when you can train all the time at 100 miles an hour with certain parameters set in place. And more than likely, you won't get hurt as long as both parties uh, adhere to those those stipulations. And it happens sometimes when people get a little overzealous and <laughs> depending on what level of of, of uh, uh, blue belt. <laughs> blue belt. <laughs> 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 and they just get yeah they do they get a little crazy and and it oops after that but if you can control it and and make sure you're over the right people yeah you, the majority you can you can go 100 miles now all balls out completely that's a, that's a huge difference when it comes to uh um being proficient when it comes to techniques and and seeing things over and over again and being able to catch those things I think that's the other thing people don't understand about striking versus uh jiu-jitsu um rolling with different people you get you get uh exposed to different people in the way they move body types and you start working those techniques and catching um uh submissions from different angles from different body uh uh compositions and all that good stuff which just makes your jujitsu better a punch is a punch a kick is a kick there's so many things you can do with it you know what i mean depending if you're a counter puncher or, or, or what have you um, there's only so much you can do with it. Yeah, that's my, that's all I got. <laughs> Sorry? Yeah, I, I think it, it's just like a matter of like, it's, it's, uh, impact versus pressure. You know, when you're, you got impact, you're inflicting damage, right? And, and everybody's only, everybody's only got a certain amount of, you know, their damage bar that, that they can handle, um, with uh with jujitsu yeah you, you you can go hard um and you can push hard and and you can move um and, and change positions um and and not inflict or receive uh damage you know um i mean you'll get uh, obviously you know it, there's still a lot of you know chances of injury and, and whatnot but you know the the likelihood it um, is definitely um, the percentage wise, I would assume is, is a lot lower um, when you're going 100 in jujitsu versus going 100 in any striking form, right? I mean, even blocking or it, it, you're still taking damage, right? And um, so, yeah, you know, and, and that's probably why you see, you know, guys competing in jujitsu all around the world up into their 60s. And you're not gonna see a boxer. Oh, Mike Tyson! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. Going oh, in man. Years old, but, oh, you know, that's another podcast. Uh, I don't feel like doing right yeah, now. Put <laughs> <laughs> uh, my mouth right there. But uh, you, you don't see it a lot, right? No. You don't see it a lot to, you know, and you're not gonna go be able to go hard, right? right. I'm sure. Sure, all of us would love to be able to be able to spar you know when we're in our 60s but we're not going to be moving and, and you know and, and receiving or giving impact that's going to be detrimental to our health you right. know so. yeah and that's not the opposite goal i've said that before too like that's the opposite of the goal we do martial arts to get stronger to protect our families to be able to longevity. be healthy yeah longevity and then when we start when we start letting our egos get in the way of that, <laughs> that's that then it starts becoming a it, it'll flip it on its head. Now you got less longevity, more injuries, and all the things that you got into this in the first place start to go out the window. So we are getting close to our wrap up here. Um, before we go, is there anything you want to promote? And I'm just gonna hand it over to Sunny. Any anything out there? If anybody wants to reach you or 
Is, is there any other events you want to mention? Um, yeah, check out, you know, if you guys are interested or if you're ever in the Bay Area, um, a little bit more northern. I don't know if some people consider it Bay. Some people say, you guys aren't the Bay Area, whatever. Northern California area. Um, my gym, uh, it's called Train for Life Center. Uh, we're located in a small little town, Sassoon. Um, If you're interested in checking out our, our amateur professional MMA fight team, uh, we're called Nobody MMA, um, and our guys compete. You know, um, I've got a couple guys fighting on UFC Fight Pass here in about about what, six, eight, eight weeks out. Camp just started this week, um, but yeah, we got a handful of homegrown um, professional MMA fighters are doing really, really well that are on the uh, on the verge of taking that next step. So um, I keep telling if they watch this, I keep telling them. Put a gi on, train cards, <laughs> but you know, ego does funny things, but they don't realize. Oh, so there is. I'm, I'm trying to see if I can. Uh, so the, if I got this right, you got the Train for Life Center, right? Awesome. Oh, right yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. So you can check out the website at trainforlife.biz. Is that right? Yeah, we got That's two dot biz or dot info, either one. Okay. Dot All info right. is a little bit nicer than dot biz. <laughs> okay, here's this is dot oh dot info trainforlife.info. Awesome. And then there's a website there, so you can check it out. To be honest, I just I just Googled Train for Life, and it oh, came up right away. So if you Google Train nice. for Life, uh, Nobody MMA at – is that your Instagram right there? Team Nobody at That's, Nobody? Yeah. All That's right. Us. I love that name. There you go. There you go. Team Nobody right here. So if you want to check it out, again, very easily, I just typed in Team Nobody. You're trying to get your guys to put on a Kaji Kimbo gi, huh? That's so rough. They don't want to wear okay. gis, man. <laughs> the geese. Right. Look, I used to think it was Kaji Kemba. Oh shit! Okay, I got. I'm gonna try to get this in two minutes so that you can get to your dinner, Sonny. I tried. To, I tried. To, I used to think it was Kaji Kemba. I was like, it's Kaji Kemba. The guys just don't want to do karate anymore. This is Karate versus Brazilian Jiu Jitsu podcast that we just did today. Maybe you guys just don't want to do karate anymore. They see the gi, they don't like it. It's probably the Kaji Kemba thing. So you know, I decided to go on this whole side journey and get certified as an assistant instructor to teach Brazilian Jiu Jitsu to bring in a, pro, a grappling program. And then guys come in and they don't want to wear the game Brazilian Jiu Jitsu either. <laughs> Turns out they just don't want to wear the game. <laughs> so that's my, that's my spiel. So, Klaus, uh, Klaus, is there anything you want to promote? Anything you want to throw out there? Actually, uh, American College of Kimball Association, we're having a seminar next month, 12th and the 13th. We got uh, some Jiu Jitsu. We got a uh, Kunsak, uh, Muay Thai uh fighter ex-fighter uh is teaching a segment and we got uh, some Kaji Kimbo guys Grandmaster Chavez um from uh, New Mexico James Cox from Abilene Texas and uh Grandmaster uh, Patrick McDaniel who unfortunately we just lost he just oh. passed away so some of his students are going to come down and, and and share at that seminar so just want to plug that out there should be a good time everybody's welcome Everybody, any system, any style, especially Kaji Kimbo, come on out. So here, just again, if you're watching or if you're listening to this, uh, is this right? The United States Kaji Kimbo Association, is this the right one? No, American Kaji Kimbo Association. AKA. American, American, okay. American Kaji Kimbo Association. Kaji Kimbo Association of America, is that right? No. No. Oh, American Kaji Kimbo with an M? Yep. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is why and this is why I ask these questions. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is why I ask these questions. All right. So if anyone are asking questions, you can check it out at the American Country Kimbo with an M. With an M. <laughs> with an M association. And it'll it'll bring you up to date on that. That'll be a whole different podcast if you want to go over that. Oh geez, country Kimbo with an M, country Kimbo with an M. Oh geez. It's not enough people are calling this the Country Kimbo podcast. It is not. <laughs> It says it right here. Social Jello with Angela podcast. <laughs> oh, the Kaji Kimbo guys really want to hijack my show. I know they do. <laughs> but anyway, I want to thank Sonny for coming out and thank you, Claude, for coming out and sharing your ideas on this. And for those of you watching, hey, share this with a karate friend or share this with a jiu-jitsu friend. See if you can get the dialogue going between you and your friends. We love martial arts. That's really what it comes down to. I know I tried to suck you in with the karate versus Brazilian jiu-jitsu thumbnail but it, it, to me it really isn't versus uh, martial arts for me is my passion and i just want to see the, the martial arts communities work together i mean i know maybe that's 
impossible, but <laughs> but I really would like to see the martial arts communities um, outside of Kaju Kenbo, the actual guys that do karate, judo, kempo, kung fu, but have an op- more open mind and start training with each other. Because that's how, that's how I always came up was uh was i've always been open to meet other people from other styles and just train and i think that's uh i think that's a beautiful thing all right y'all have a great week one of these a week catch you next time